Alright, for this video guys, we're going to be looking at how to create professional looking plots. Alright, so these are not ones that are just messing around plots, and not ones that you just push print screen and then stick in your report. Okay, we want to create professional looking plots, ones that you're actually proud to show off and people can read and understand without you describing them. That's what you really want to show. To do this, we're going to use an example. Uh, we're going to use the projectile motion equations, the parabolic arc that a projectile follows uh, based on the effect of gravity. So based on the physics, we know the position of it as a function of time, gravitational constant, the initial velocity, and the initial angle that we uh, threw or fired the projectile at. Right, so you can get that from Wikipedia. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit into this as a script into MATLAB. And I'm going to enter my constants. So let's say v0 is 5 meters per second. I always recommend you add the units in as comments as I've done here. g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. And the initial angle that we throw it at, I like to think in degrees. So let's do 60 times pi over 180. Okay, and that will end up being in radians. Let's give ourselves a time vector. So we're going to evaluate those equations at lots of time points so that we can get a uh, picture of the uh, projectile as it, with respect to time, not just at where it finally lands. And the easiest way to do that is using our friend thin space. And I'm going to use 100 points between 0 and 1. No, and that's the default if there's no third argument. Okay, and that will be in seconds. So the displacement equations are as follows. x is equal to v0 times t times cos of theta. Now I don't need a dot times anywhere here, because that's a scalar. This is a scalar, and that's the only vector there. So I don't need it here. y is equal to v0 times t times sine of theta minus 0 0.5 times g times t dot power 2. Alright, remember, even with a scalar, when we use power, that's a vector, we must use the dot power. Minus works because this is a vector, this is a vector, and they're both the same dimensions. Alright, so if I execute this, right, that's already been executed, we've got our solution x and y, let's plot it. Okay, plot x comma y, and let's see what we get. And there it is. Right, x-axis, y-axis, and we can see that at some point crosses through that x-axis and our projectile goes underground, for example. Okay, remember it's only a simulation, perhaps we threw it off a cliff. But we see that characteristic parabolic arc that we're expecting. Alright, let's improve on this plot to a point where you should be prepared to at least show it to somebody else, because at the moment, absolutely not. Nobody can tell what you've shown here. Um, you can take a guess, it's a parabola, and that's probably about it. So first thing we need to do is document that plot. So title, predictable position. We give it a label on the x-axis. So x position in meters. And a label on the y-axis, the y position. Meters. Once again, you must have units. All right. It simply doesn't make sense to put a plot up without units, unless you are plotting a uh, a value that does not have any units, a dimensionless value. All right. So now we're getting to a point where we basically say, okay, we're happy with this. This this looks all right. Uh, what we could do is just help out the user a little bit more by adding in a horizontal line that shows where zero is. And that just helps the user work out when it's actually crossed and gone underground or let's say off the cliff in this particular simulation. All right, what I've done here is I've said between the x-axis limits, so that's at three and zero, and at the y point zero and zero, draw me a black k with a dash line as we see there. 
All right, you can add in these little customizations after each pair of potting arguments. This is one students like to do. Make it a horrible color like yellow so you can't see it. It's even worse on the projector. So make sure you choose sensible colors. Half a red, nice and easy to see, nice and easy to interpret this diagram. From this, I'd be pretty confident that someone would be able to understand what's happened here. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to add in the y position now as a function of time. So I think that would be quite interesting to see as well. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on the same plot, but we're going to have divide this, this window into three separate plots. So we're going to have three plots, three rows by one column by, and this first plot will be in position one. So if I run that, you'll see that now this is in this top part here, and in position below it, we're going to plot t versus y. So now we can see, with respect to time, what happens to the arc. All right. Of course, we must always give it a, always label it. And when this time our axis is time. Okay, so that's starting to look not too bad. We can see the y position versus x position. We can see the y position versus time. In terms of when it reaches its maximum peak and comes back down again. So you can basically estimate which time it is. One thing I also want to do though, is I want to be able to plot the velocity of our projectile. In this case we've got the equations here, which allows us to give the uh, velocity. So let's implement those. Velocity equations. Vx is equal to V0 times cos of theta, which in our case is going to be constant x velocity, versus Vy, which is equal to V0 times sine of theta minus gravity times time. Right, don't need any dots in there. And then finally V is equal to the square root of Vx squared plus Vy dot power squared. Remember this is going to be a scalar, this is a vector, so we need the dot power there. Square root works for the vector, and we're going to get back the velocity as a vector as we see there. So then in our final plot, let's change the label to velocity, meters per second, plot t versus y, and we'll plot it in the third one. All right, and we will plot it as magenta. Okay, and it does as we expect. Starts at five. Velocity decreases down to its minimum point when it reaches the top of its arc, and then begins to increase again as the projectile begins to fall as the effect of gravity. All right, we've now got a plot here which is quite reasonable. I'd be quite happy to be able to display that. Um, and people should be able to look at this and interpret it. We've got reasonable colors, we've got it correctly labeled, we've got units where they needed to, and we've got a title for it.